Inside the historic and Grand Lincoln Castle sits a rather interesting and infamous prison. As well as having a key defensive role in protecting the area, the castle was also used to house undesirables and criminals. The castle would deal with some of the most serious crimes in the local area. In this video, we will show you around the prison and the cells, as well as telling you some of the stories of individual prisoners. Today we explore and show you around Lincoln Castle's brutal Victorian prison. Remember, if you do enjoy our videos, please make sure to subscribe. In 1776, the county jail in Lincoln Castle was in a dire state, and a new building needed to be built. The days of the bloody code were coming to an end, in which people could be killed for menial and trivial offences, such as stealing a rabbit, or stealing an item of which today would be around £30. There was a greater call for the idea of rehabilitation, and that prisons should be used as a place to reform, and this is where Lincoln's new prison comes in. Upon entering the prison, we will first show you around the women's prison section. First of all, there's an exhibition on archaeology, and also there's a room which shows a sarcophagus of a skeleton which was exhumed from a few years ago. Walking down the corridors, you can really get a feel for the claustrophobic environment that prisoners would have experienced here. The whole idea of Lincoln Castle was that every inmate would be kept separate. The separate system, as it was known, was meant to isolate every prisoner for every hour of the day. Prisoners would be locked up for most hours, however, when they were taken to chapel, or for exercise, they would be chained to other prisoners and given a mask so they couldn't see. Prisoners were also banned from speaking to other prisoners and their jailers. Here you can see what a woman's cell would have looked like. You can see a desk in which prisoners could read and write upon. You can also see in the corner a small toilet and a wash basin. When an outbreak of jail fever hit Lincoln in the 19th century, investigators would check these toilets to see if there was an issue with the water, like other outbreaks of illness in other prisons, such as a cholera outbreak in London's Millbank prison. The person in charge of the women's prison was a matron. The matron would not be allowed to leave the prison without permission. She would have her own quarters and would administer punishment should they be needed. In the matron's journal in October 1868, she writes when talking about a prisoner, Priscilla Biggerdyke received for trial at the next assize. She has a baby with her and cannot attend chapel. One pint of milk and a pound of bread allowed daily for this child. She then writes on the 30th of October that Priscilla's child was taken away. On the 11th of November, she wrote, PB convicted of murder and sentenced to be executed. On the 28th of November, she was executed. Priscilla Biggerdyke would become the first woman in Britain to be executed in private. She was convicted of poisoning her husband Richard with arsenic at their home. The matron would need to keep records on every movement inside the prison. The matron would also need to show no emotion, however could find herself doing a number of different duties. She could be attending to the sick, sorting out the food for the prisoners, but also dealing with the mentally ill and condemned. Her office would overlook the woman's exercise yard, so she could always keep watch. Another story of a woman prisoner held in Lincoln is the case of Lucy Buxton. She was sentenced to hang for the murder of her illegitimate baby, aged five months. She was pregnant when imprisoned for an earlier crime, but was released in a given birth. Appalled by the death sentence, after the public outcry, her death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. Prisoners were allowed to keep their babies in prison, and five babies were actually born inside of the prison walls. However, sadly, only two of those survived. Leaving the women's jail, you are taken to the much larger men's jail. The separate system was still used in this part of the jail, and was extremely unpopular with the prisoners. No communication with anyone was enough to drive them mad, and they would even try to communicate at night by tapping on the pipes. Some examples of the crimes that men committed and were sent here are as followed. Robert and Charles Traves were sentenced to seven years for manslaughter after killing a gamekeeper while poaching. George Ray was sentenced to five years for stealing jewellery and money at a post office where he worked. Frederick Horry was held here whilst he was waiting for his execution after shooting his wife. Finally, George Pinder was imprisoned for stealing a church warden's umbrella, so those who found themselves at Lincoln Prison had committed a different range of crimes. Inside the male prison, there were a number of punishment cells, a sort of even more solitary confinement. Within these cells, prisoners would be shackled up and have food limited. 
Due to the overcrowding problems, at some points prisoners were not kept separately. At one point it was noted that there would be three prisoners sleeping in one cell. You can see this here. The beds were strapped across the cell using belt loops. Throughout the day these beds could then be folded up making more space. These beds must have been extremely uncomfortable for one to sleep in. The overcrowding of Lincoln, as mentioned earlier, did lead to an outbreak of jail fever in which many of the prisoners got sick. Modern day historians believe this to be an outbreak of typhus. You will notice in each of the cells how they are remarkably small and basic. The window that is there would have been frosted with no ability to see out, driving the prisoners completely stir crazy. Many of them have been from large peasant families and now find themselves thrown in a solitary jail which would have been hellish. The jail also had a priest or a chaplain that would meet with the prisoners on a regular basis. Here they would debate God and religion and the priest would make them see the errors of their ways. He also collected books for the prisoners to read. The priest would also carry out services in the chapel of which we will touch on a little bit later. The prison also had two surgeons. Ralph Howitt was a surgeon for 10 years between 1843 and 1853 and he was known to be a compassionate man and tried to cure the outbreak of jail fever tirelessly. Inside the male prison, prisoners were also given some time each day to exercise and be outside of their cells. The exercise yard would have been regularly watched closely by the guards. There is absolutely no way one could escape from this area and you can also see a number of toilet facilities that could have been used. The fresh air would be a welcome thing for the prisoners, however the thought that only a few hundred metres away that people were free could not help their time in jail. One of the most incredible parts of this jail is the prison chapel. All prisoners except Roman Catholics, the sick or those nursing small babies would attend daily prayers in the chapel and also two services on Sunday. The prisoners would see this as a break from the boredom and would look forward to Sundays. The chapel is the only example in the world of a separate system chapel. The prisoners were enclosed in a wooden box like cell and were separated from each other by a locked door. They were unable to communicate with each other and could only see the prison chaplain in his pulpit. The chaplain could then see everybody. What's remarkable about this system is the lack of room a prisoner would have here. It is extremely claustrophobic and not very comfortable at all. At the back of the chapel would have sat the debtors and the women would have sat at the front on the benches. The service would be based around the idea of forgiveness and making the prisoners reformed so at the end of their sentence they can return to society being better human beings. Lincoln Prison is a remarkable building. It gives us an insight into some of the amazing stories that pass between these walls during the Victorian era. It tells a remarkable story in which many of the prisoners held here met an untimely end, either for a trip to the gallows or through the mire of a monotonous and extremely hard incarceration. Thank you for watching. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.